Welcome all. In this lecture, we are going to study about attenuation in waveguide. Since in the previous lecture series of rectangular waveguide, we assumed that our wave is propagating in positive z direction. But on the other hand, during its propagation, it suffers some attenuations inside the rectangular waveguide. And these attenuations are due to some losses that are associated with rectangular waveguide. So let us discuss that attenuations. In case of rectangular waveguide, we assume that the walls of waveguide are perfectly conducting. So what do you mean by the perfectly conducting? Here the value of sigma that is conductivity is equal to infinite because it is perfectly conducting and also the dielectric is also perfect. Now. The electromagnetic wave that is propagating through the waveguide suffers some attenuations. Since we discussed that these attenuations occur due to the losses. So there are basically three types of losses due to which the attenuation in the waveguide occurs. Talking about the first loss that is happens due to losses in dielectric. Moving on to second loss that occurs due to the inner waveguide walls. And the third loss occurs when the operating frequency is less less than the cutoff frequency. So in the three scenarios and due to the three losses the attenuation occurs. So let us consider the first type of losses that are losses in dielectric through which the attenuation occurs inside waveguide. Whenever the wave is get attenuated by some attenuation constant inside the propagation of rectangular waveguide we can say that there are some power losses occur and we are considering the power losses that are caused by dielectric attenuation. Since we are considering the case of dielectric that's why in case of low loss dielectric the value of conductivity is very less less than the product of permeability and permittivity. This is the condition that we discussed in the previous lectures also for the low loss dielectric. Since there are some power losses that are associated with wave propagation. So there are two modes in the rectangular waveguide which is supported by it. Mode number one is the TE mode. So in the TE mode the attenuation constant is represented by alpha g. And the alpha g value is equal to sigma neta over 2 under the root 1 minus fc over f to the power 2. Here fc is nothing but cutoff frequency. And f is nothing but operating frequency. So this is all about the attenuation constant in case of TE mode inside rectangular waveguide. Let us discuss the second mode that is supported by rectangular waveguide that is transverse magnetic mode. In case of transverse magnetic mode the attenuation constant by which the wave get attenuated is given by alpha g where the value of this alpha g is nothing but equals to sigma neta over under the root 1 minus fc over f whole square over 2. So this is the expression for the attenuation constant in TE mode. Here this neta is the intrinsic impedance, sigma is the conductivity, fc is the cutoff frequency and f is nothing but operating frequency. So this is all about the losses that are associated with dielectric. Now let us discuss the second type of losses that is losses in guide walls. So what do you mean by the losses in guide walls? Whenever the wave is propagating inside rectangular waveguide then there are some losses that are associated with its wall of the rectangular waveguide and these guide walls refers to that walls of the rectangular waveguide due to which some losses occurs and by the help of these losses we can measure the attenuation constant. So consider the power losses which occurs due to the waveguide walls. In terms of the electric field and the magnetic field here is the representation. 
so for the electric field we can represent it as magnitude of e of 0 z into e to the power minus alpha g z here the alpha g is nothing but attenuation constant through which the power loss occur due to waveguide walls in terms of the magnetic field it is given as the magnitude of h of 0 z e to the power minus alpha g z now we are considering the case of low loss guide so in case of low loss guide the time average power flow decreases by e to the power minus 2 alpha g z so this is the exponential term through which the power loss occurs or the rate of power decreases here this expression shows the power loss per unit length so the pl is equals to ptr plus p losses multiplied with e to the power minus 2 alpha g z here pl is nothing but power loss per unit length so that we can easily measure the amount of power loss that occurs during the wave propagation ptr is nothing but transmitted power and p loss are the total losses during the propagation and e to the power minus 2 alpha gz is the decaying factor or the exponential term we showing the decaying for the p losses value which is less less than the value of p transmitted and the value of 2 alpha gz is less less than 1 if this two condition happen then we can calculate the attenuation constant that is represented as alpha g which is being equal to pl over 2 ptr so this is the expression for the attenuation constant which occur due to the losses in waveguide walls now let us have a look at the third type of losses that occurs when the operating frequency is less less than cutoff frequency see the operating frequency is denoted by f and the cutoff frequency for the waveguide propagation is denoted by fc according to this case this losses occurs when the operating frequency value is less less than cutoff frequency in this scenario the electromagnetic wave that is propagating inside the rectangular waveguide will get attenuated and if we calculate the value of attenuation constant through which the wave is attenuated then we can easily calculate it and here is the expression where this alpha f denotes the attenuation constant due to frequency when the frequency is less less than cutoff frequency and it is being equal to 2 pi over lambda c under the root 1 minus f square over fc square here this lambda c is nothing but cutoff wavelength and this f is the operating frequency and fc is cutoff frequency since there are two conditions which are associated with attenuation in waveguide so the first condition we have discussed whenever the operating frequency is less than cutoff frequency but if we talk about the another condition in terms of the wavelength then it will be represented like this so on converting the frequency in terms of wavelength it will be written as lambda and the frequency that is cutoff frequency in terms of the wavelength will be represented as lambda c c here is the operating frequency less than cutoff frequency then the attenuation happens but here is the reverse case because the operating wave wavelength is greater than cutoff wavelength then only the attenuation will get happen and if we calculate the attenuation constant for the cutoff wavelength then we can get the attenuation constant as 2 pi over lambda c where lambda c is the cutoff wavelength so this is all about the losses which occurs and the attenuation which causes due to the waveguide propagation if you like my videos then do subscribe my channel and please hit the like button thank you